this is it, suburbia. You got to make your overview. You tell your story, and the rest of the photographs are telling what it's about. So I would go down, knock on the front door, go in the house, photograph the kitchen, backyard, garage, Fourth of July party, Halloween, and show the lifestyle that Americans live. And most photographers are too busy being artists. Good for them. Here I am in the early 70s with my Pentax 6-7. Here's a shot that the, uh, when it's published in Science and Mer Mercury News, they had to white out uh, Raggedy Ann and Raggedy Andy doing it because it's too obscene. I always photograph the most mundane things. So, like a newspaper photographer, you always photograph ribbon cuttings. So I have a couple of shots of that. You know, the, just, you know, <clears throat> send me anywhere and there's a photograph. You know, here I'm at the Dairy Queen. You know, there's a photograph there. Tupperware, there's a photograph. Here's uh, a beauty contest. Oh, yeah, I have a sense of humor about it. I come early. I stand the right place. So you got the mug shots of the girls being looked at. And the standard for beauty in our society is how you hold your hands. So if you look, this girl's hands are wrong. So she's ruled out. The second standard for beauty is the angel bones. So you put your chest out, the little bones in your back show. The third one is tallness in our society. So the tallest one with the angel bones, her hands right, won. The lady with the broken leg got miscongeniality. Good Guys Parade, chiropractors, sandblasters. This is one of my first exhibits. Oh, here's a group you gotta love them. The John Birch Society. Oh my God, save us from those people. Save us from the Republicans. At least we got them out of office. <clears throat> anti-Vietnam War, but here's one kind of shots again that I like to make that are sardonic. Everybody goes to Yosemite and they all make the same dumb shots. Half Dome and Glacier Point and they don't have any, any vision. So what do I do? I take it when there's 6,000 cars all lined up. So it'll be the contradiction of the cars and then the mountain there. It's not just a nice pretty shot that somebody... Uh, and most of the time when I take these shots I don't even get out of the car. I just roll down the... hit the button goes down the window. But well, they did something here for this show I really love, is they took the contact sheets and put them up on a wall. And the contact sheets are just great to see all the colors. And like, here's, here's a thing called uh, a grill. And this was on a poster. And I just stopped my car and went down the street and put the camera up and shot it through the, the glare. You can actually see some of the glare. But the fact is you can go get your teeth fixed, fitted with a grill. So you look like somebody from the hood. But it's fun to have all these shots. When I was in Florida, I sunburned my legs, not my feet. And here's again my food shots. I'm doing a lot of food shots. The hot dog, the rare meat. You want to get cancer? Eat that stuff. You know? Clouds. I mean, that's a beautiful cloud shot. McDonald's, fresh produce. Ooh, look at that up there. That'll kill you. Right? I'll eat this stuff. I just don't eat it. Oh, here's a shot I want to show you. Here's a, I had a guy paint my house, and this is my house with me holding a painting of my house in the background. So I like, uh, you know, I'm interested in lots of things. And I've done a lot of projects. You know, I usually, when I do a project, I'll have a shooting script, a mission statement. I'll plan for a year. It takes a year to shoot it and a year to get it published. One book, like the Leisure Book, set, well, I don't know, for 15 years before it got published. It's just, publishing is way, way too hard, and I don't know why I'm doing it. I do it because I can, I guess.